don't feel too good. Not smiling anymore. My stomach is hurting me. Simple chicken soup. Let's see. I'm only supposed to do clear, so I'll probably have to strain, strain it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. It's got chicken, carrots, what onions, else? And onions ginger. and ginger. Yeah. Maybe a little seasoning? Yeah, a little seasoning, a little garlic. Yeah. So what are your thoughts about my colonoscopy, Ker Kenton? I was going to say Kareem. Yeah, I guess Kareem. Yeah. yeah. You nervous or not really? I'm almost, you know, a little nervous. I, I worry about everything. So today is the day before my colonoscopy and I apologize that I don't look as cute and as glamorous as I normally would look, but this is real life and I'm going to be showing you everything I needed or everything we had to buy for the colonoscopy and also what I have been consuming or going to consume before this colonoscopy and I might even include how many times I have to go to the bathroom for this colonoscopy because that's all part of the process. That is all part of the things you need to expect that your diet will be different and your bowel habits will be very different. I went and had my COVID test today. Earlier today, I had my COVID test and uh, it was uncomfortable. I will say it was uncomfortable. It wasn't extremely painful, no. I would give it maybe a six and a half or seven out of 10 in terms of discomfort. It's a beautiful Monday, the first Monday after the election. Uh, but yet feeling anxious and got a headache, did not sleep, barely slept. Two o'clock still up, three o'clock still up, 4 a.m., 5.30 still up, just anxious, couldn't go to sleep uh, because of this colonoscopy ahead. But we're going to Chapel Hill so I can get my rapid COVID test before the colonoscopy. And they should have the results apparently today my iPhone you guys by the way but anyway this is outside the tent um, in line for the rapid COVID test anyway it's different it's different oh this is a whole operation you guys this whole tent thing a lot of cars oh my god oh I just finished I shoved that q-tip down even though I think she wasn't too bad she wasn't too bad, but oh, you feel like the stuff goes up into your brain. How many times she had me counting? She had me, yeah. or she was counting, no, more than 10. She's like swirling the Q-tip down. Oh, oh gosh. Mm. Anyway, at least this is over. Yeah, I had that today and then last night we went and bought some supplies which I will show you right now. Okay, so this is probably more than I need, definitely more than I need, but I wanted to have options because I don't want to be bored with what I drink. So this is actually, uh, actually it's 7-Up is Kenton's um, and Ginger Canada Dry Ginger Ale. But if you had to do clears, you could mix a little bit of this in whatever clear you're doing, but that's not what is actually recommended. What is recommended is uh, Gatorade. This Gatorade, so I'm taking the clear. They specifically said avoid any drinks or food that have red in them, because a lot of times food with red means that it's red dye, it's not natural. And in the past, uh, you know, as a clinician, I would prescribe go lightly, which is prescription. But I guess nowadays you just buy it over the counter instead of go lightly, uh, you know, pre-prepared. You can get Dolcolax, a laxative. These come in tablets. Um, and then also Miralax. So this big bottle is got the 14 once daily doses, but for a colonoscopy, we will be literally consuming, I guess, the entire thing. I also have some Sprite here. So to be honest, I guess the main things that we're going to need or going to be using is this 
Gatorade, the Miralax, and the Dolcalax laxative. I forgot, I also had to get uh, a bottle of apple juice because again, I just wanted some variety just in case I don't like the Gatorade because I'm not one who normally drinks Gatorade at all. I actually avoid Gatorade most of the times because it does have sodium in it or salt. And since I have high blood pressure, I just didn't want to drink Gatorade straight. I wanted to mix it with water or mix it with juice. So this size uh, is, let me see, 1.9 liters or 64, 64 fluid ounces. So, so far, all I've had is one glass of water, a cup of water, a cup of tea, and also I've had a cup of that apple juice. That's all I've had. So I'm feeling kind of hungry, to be honest. But I just wanted to let you know, um, yeah, that the um, GI service has been really good about mailing us instructions and uh, letting me know what I can and cannot consume, and also, um, you know, how to prepare the prep. And also, you know, they called me the day uh, before I was supposed to get the COVID test. And then they called me also today uh, to remind me of the colonoscopy. So I've had several calls making sure that I don't, you know, miss that colonoscopy. Pouring out most of the apple juice. And I'll put this in the fridge, you know, for the kids or for whoever. And then this, I left a little bit of apple juice because I know that I like the flavor. I'm supposed to mix the Miralax with Gatorade. So I'm just gonna pour this this way. I know how much I'm drinking. And I'm supposed to drink this every 15 minutes until it's finished. So here's my Gatorade in there. Um, and as you can see, this is not 64 ounces. It's not filled. So I'm gonna put another one in there. All right, and now we're gonna add the Miralax to it. And I have never in my life had to take this before. So I'm doing the split prep. Mix one half of the Miralax powder. So one half of this Miralax powder with one 64 ounce bottle and shake well. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna guesstimate a half. <sighs> Probably, but I don't know, is that half? Let's go some more. All right, it's probably a little bit more than a half, maybe. We'll see. All right, I'm supposed to take this first. This is the Dulcolex. I'm supposed to take Three, three five milligram bisacardal tablets immediately before starting the Miralax. So, I'll take it. Oh, nice and small. Bottoms up. Here we go. That was okay. We'll see if we're okay. <laughs> In a few hours, I will keep checking back with you to see how this goes. I am really hungry. Okay, first glass. Every 15 minutes. It actually smells good, to be honest. I feel like it smells good. Hmm, it actually doesn't taste bad. I guess with the Gatorade, it just has that slightly salty taste, but it almost tastes cherry-ish. I use this Gatorade, the Frost. It actually tastes good. Crisp and cool. Glacier cherry, okay, I was right. So even though it was clear, it, it's a cherry flavor. I can literally hear it going down my belly. Mm. But I want food. 
Anyway, I want something hot, so I'm gonna have my soup. I wouldn't mind a piece of fruit, but not today. Those mangoes are looking very nice. That plantain sure looks good. <laughs> Why do we torture ourselves? That avocado. Okay, let me be honest. Yesterday, I ate well. I ate really well. I had some baked chicken, and I also made some um, liver and onions. So I probably ate heavier than I should have. So what I'm going to do is take out some of this delicious-looking soup. Look at that. but I'm gonna strain it using my strainer. So maybe I'll show you right here. This is literally the first hot meal I am having, if you can call this a meal. Mm. This would be so good with some bread and butter. <laughs> so good with some bread and butter, but nope, we're not doing that. Not today. Which reminds me, I need to do my hair because I've been wearing wigs lately, and so my hair is corn braided underneath, but I don't think that's a good idea when you're going under anesthesia and you're gonna be out because the worst thing I see is my wig falling off. That would be hella embarrassing for my wig to fall off, or that would be maybe a little bit disturbing for the staff as well, and I just don't feel like taking a wig off, so I'm gonna do my hair this evening. Okay, the soup was good. Let's finish up this glass. Oh, you really got to pace yourself or else it really feels a lot. Okay, so I'm doing my hair. I don't mean to scare you, but this is what's under the wig. <laughs> don't mind me. I am, I've got shampoo on my head. She's growing. This has been one month since I chopped off my hair. Progress. Another glass. I think this might be glass number three, maybe. But I went one time, one time, the first time for the day. <laughs> so progress and it's only been an hour. Clean, dry hair. What has all this got to do with my colonoscopy? It keeps me distracted and it keeps you entertained, hopefully. <laughs> oh, what time is it now? It's like after eight. I don't feel too good. I'm not smiling anymore. My stomach is hurting me. It's hurting me. I just came back from the bathroom. This is not fun anymore. Well, it wasn't fun. I was trying to make it fun so I could motivate myself to keep drinking. But right now I'm starting to look at that juice or that go lightly or that Merrillax and I'm like mm. I have to just keep reminding myself the more you drink the better they can see the more you drink the better they can see and that way you can get a thorough colonoscopy all right hair is clean now I need to decide what kind of style I'm gonna wear tomorrow. Not that I really care about the style, not really. All I care is that my hair is neat because I don't wanna go to sleep and wake up looking crazy or have them talking about me while I'm asleep. Almost there, almost there. Oh, 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 oh. Gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go, bye. You're gonna need lots of these in addition to Lots of toilet paper. I don't know why, but it's a lot harder than I thought. Seriously, it's a lot more challenging than I thought it would be. Good morning, it's the next day, and on our way to my colonoscopy, which is a distance away, so I had to wear some serious protection. <laughs> 
I really hope I did a good enough prep. I'm a little worried about that. I drank as much as I could. And uh, the next day, as in today, I drank another two glasses more. Um, I'm not sure that I did enough, but I'm hoping. Uh, so anyway, just feel a little queasy, very bloated, but I just hope it goes okay. I got Mariam in the car, daughter, youngest. <laughs> waiting room of the GI waiting to be called GI procedures am I nervous maybe a little bit trying not to be it's too late now I'm alive I'm alive I'm alive. I just feel a little sleepy. A little sleepy, man. That propofol works. And then you hear, it's funny, your sense of hearing comes back first. Because you hear someone in the room talking. Hey you guys, it's been a couple of days since my screening colonoscopy and I just wanted to come here and give you a recap. I am so relieved it is over, so, so relieved. It's one thing to be a physician and prescribe a colonoscopy for your patients to do. It's completely different when you are the patient yourself. Um, I am the worst patient and I mean that in the sense that I get extremely anxious and I'm one of those people, and as I'm sure many providers are, where you think about all the worst things that could potentially happen. And it was definitely interesting. So I just wanted to sit down and kind of tell you what happened, the parts that I couldn't record, yeah, what my results were and why you should also make sure you get your screening colonoscopy. It's very important, it's so important. You guys remember Bozeman, um, the amazing actor who, well, he was more than an actor. He was so much to so many people. His death was so tragic at the age of 43 back in August. Can you believe it's been quite a few months since then? It feels like yesterday. But anyway, you guys, I'm sure remember his tragic death as a result of colon cancer. So it's definitely one of those things we all need to understand and um, recognize the signs, the symptoms. When should you get tested? I did a little uh, talk uh, a few months ago, which I kind of posted on Facebook, on my Facebook page, with a lot of details about colon cancer. But anyway, let me go ahead and tell you my experience. So let's sit down. Okay, I can see you better now. <laughs> So yeah, let's go back to uh, the night that I took the prep. Uh, it was a struggle. I was trying to do my hair, as you can see, I kind of finished it. Nothing professional. This was just a quick and easy uh, hairdo. But anyway, so I did not sleep very well. I did not sleep that night very well because I was just worried. I kept thinking about what it was gonna be like going under anesthesia. And um, because I really never really had to go under anesthesia uh, before, except for my wisdom teeth. Other than that, which was many years ago, I have not really had to have any surgeries. So although again, I take care of patients or have taken care of patients who on a daily basis, uh, I meet people who have had surgeries of different kinds, uh, or have needed surgeries and had to go under, I personally have not had to do that. So I was very anxious because I know, um, you know, some of the things that can happen. On the other hand, it felt like irrational thought because colonoscopies are one of those things that are pretty low risk. Of course they have a risk to them, but it's a pretty low risk procedure. 
morning I got up and I decided I needed to drink some more of the prep I was supposed to do kind of half and half so the following morning I needed to do the second half but we didn't have a lot of time to drink all that prep because I needed to leave the house and go up you know drive to the uh, procedure so I kind of felt really anxious like where am I supposed to or when am I supposed to finish this second half of the prep so I took a few glasses um, and then we left. So my tip for you after having a prep is you gonna need some diapers. <laughs> Kenton got me some adult diapers because you don't wanna have an accident in the car. Um, and luckily I did not, but I felt a lot more secure having the adult diaper on. So I know this sounds like TMI, but we all grown here. I just need to tell you, invest in some adult diapers and maybe some pads, you know, those pads that you put like when you have a pet. Um, and those are like the little blue pads. So when we got there, um, signed in, and of course, you know, everything is different now with COVID. Everything is different with the pandemic. So they're not allowing a lot of patients in uh, at the same time. So in the waiting room, it was very few people. We were all very spread out. Um, you come in, you sign in, you wait. So um, I went with Mariam and Kenton and um, Mariam actually had to stay downstairs near the cafeteria or near the entrance and Kenton went upstairs with me. So we waited for uh, what felt like almost an hour because it turned out we were on time but they might have been running behind finally they call me in and then um the first person i meet was a nurse who asked me about you know my name uh, my medical history um she wanted to know how much of the prep i had managed to consume i told her i didn't finish it entirely um so she said she wanted me to use the bathroom and she would take a look and at first i was like Oh my God, I can't believe you want to look, really? But of course, you have to remember, they do this all the time. They do this every day. She took a look. She said, oh, you're fine. It's perfect. You're going to be okay. So you get dressed up in your exam gown. I get put up on the monitor. They check my vitals, as in my blood pressure, my temperature, um, more questions, just screening questions. Eventually, I got to meet the anesthesiologist who was really nice. I was, I just felt like it was also very important for me to see who was going to be responsible for putting me under. Um, very nice young doctor and uh, she just made me feel at ease. The GI doctor uh, was an older uh, uh, female doctor uh, and she also put me at ease. I did have a consultation with her. Uh, via zoom um, a couple of months ago so yeah this colonoscopy was set up several months ago so I got to meet her and anyway you meet all the different staff they made me feel comfortable they knew I was anxious eventually I got wheeled into the procedure room what I remember is uh, talking to them and trying to kind of make myself feel comfortable so, um, you know, again, they were all friendly. It was a team of all women. And I remember saying like, hey, all this girl power in here. And uh, they had me roll onto my side. The nurse was kind of touching my hand, stroking my hand, touching my shoulder, trying to let me, you know, get really comfortable. And she was like, just go ahead and have some happy thoughts. Just think happy thoughts. And the anesthesia anesthesiologist was on this side and I guess they made eye contact and she said she was ready. So next thing you know, they pushed that propofol or she pushed that propofol and I don't remember anything else. Next thing I remember, I look around, I'm like, this is not the room I was in a minute ago. And it turns out I'm in recovery and it's all done. So it's like a split second in your head. That's what it feels like. Literally a split second went by. I wake up and the nurse comes in and she goes, oh, you're up. I said, yes, I'm ready to go home now. She says, oh no, you gotta wait a few minutes. So I could, it was like I was talking to her but my eyes were actually closed. So I wasn't fully, fully awake. 
Uh, but I felt fine. To be honest, I felt great. I felt like nothing had happened, except I realized that I had a little bit of a sore throat because I had an EGD where they put the scope down your throat. And so I felt like I had a slight sore throat and I, I was coughing a little bit. But other than that, to be honest, I feel like I really had a good experience. Um, and I feel like I was worrying unnecessarily uh, about this whole anesthesia. And uh, anyway, so it went well. Thank God it went well. And I just wanted to use this opportunity to just remind everyone to remind their loved ones or you know make sure you yourself make sure you remind your loved ones to get their screening colonoscopy and all your screening medical or health related tests so when i was leaving i got actually a printed kind of looks like this you get um you know you get details you know you might not be able to fully understand but of course as a physician myself i can understand this um, and so it was just really cool to see the report. You get to see whether you have internal hemorrhoids or if you have polyps. Um, of course, I had to wait for the pathology to come back because even though they can tell you what they see, it still has to be analyzed in the lab um, or by pathology. So today I actually got back my report and um, like I did have uh, three polyps. Uh, and one of them was really just what they call a hyperplastic polyp, I believe, uh, which is one of the most commonly found polyps in the um, GI system, and it's not malig not malignant uh, in general. You know, when should you start the screening for a colonoscopy? Well, usually in the past, when I was training, they would say that screening should start at the age of 50, but now, as of now, or as of recent, they really um, are stressing that screening colonoscopy should be started at age 45, especially if you are black, because one of the risk factors, there are several risk factors for colon cancer, but it definitely appears to be pretty high amongst the African-American community or amongst black people in general. Now, part of that might be um, you know, not as simple as just genetics. Part of it might be also due to access to care that a lot of us uh, don't find out we have colon cancer till it's late because uh, of either poverty, again, because of lack of access, um, you know, um, because of late diagnosis, all of these things uh, ha affecting, you know, um, that higher risk. Other risk factors for colon cancer include uh, a poor, poor diet, as in high fat diet, not eating enough fruits and vegetables. So I was telling you about risk factors for colon cancer. Some other risk factors for colon cancer, if I haven't mentioned obesity, morbid obesity uh, is a risk factor. Um, diabetes is another risk factor. Um, smoking history. Uh, excessive alcohol use, excessive consumption of processed meat is another one. Of course, having a family history of colon cancer, especially, especially the hereditary types, um, and certainly having a history, a personal history of colon cancer increases your risk of future colon cancer. So definitely discuss with your provider what your risk factors are and when you should, uh, or when the appropriate time for your screening colonoscopy should be. Now, of course, there are other, there are other screening tests for colon cancer that are non-invasive that are more convenient. But to be honest, the screening colonoscopy is the gold standard. And that is because Unfortunately, although those other tests might be easier to do or might be more convenient or might be less invasive, if any of them come back, if any of them come back positive, you still have to have a screening or diagnostic colonoscopy. So once you have another test and it comes up positive or abnormal, you're going to need to have a colonoscopy and then that colonoscopy is more of a diagnostic colonoscopy. So definitely make sure again that you have that discussion with your provider. Definitely remind your loved ones 
um, to make sure that they're not due and that they've had the appropriate tests. So in the meantime, maybe you have had your screening colonoscopy or maybe you're not old enough yet or maybe you don't have a family history and you just feel like you're not worried or you're not concerned, although I think you should be, we should all be, um, what can you do in the meantime to lower your risk? What can you do, you know, besides wait for fate, right? Well, what you can do is definitely increase your physical activity. I know it's very difficult or it can be challenging, especially during these pandemic times, to be as physically active when we're all kind of confined, most of us, to our homes or, you know, to a very limited um, location. Definitely do your best to get some physical activity, whether it's walking, whether it's dancing in front of your television, whether it's some light aerobics, whatever, whether it's walking around your neighborhood. Um, you know what you need to do. You know what, you know, um, is best for you, but definitely have some physical activity as part of your daily life, um, at least 30 minutes a day. And then the other thing you can do, of course, is increase your fruit and vegetable intake um, and cut back on processed foods because they have definitely found that processed foods or excessive amounts of processed foods and processed meats um, increase your risk of colon cancer. If you do smoke, another thing, if you do smoke, try to quit. Discuss with your provider about quitting smoking. I'm sure most of us now know that smoking is dangerous to our health. We all we all know it. Um, but I think, you know, for some people, it's just difficult to quit. Um, they're not quite there yet, but I think do your best to set a plan or set a time when you think you are going to quit, but you definitely should plan to quit. I don't think, you know, in this day and age, anyone um, with good sense should continue to smoke or pretend that smoking doesn't come with some significant risks. Um, so yeah, those are the things that you can do. Eat more fruits and vegetables, get your physical activity in, um, cut back on alcohol if you do drink, quit smoking. Uh, these are things you can do. And of course, of course, make sure you get your screening tests because again, colonoscopy, not only helps to diagnose, but technically it's also treating because not only do they look or visualize the entire colon, but they also will remove polyps. If you do have polyps, remove them while they see them, you know, which is not something you can do with some of those non-invasive tests. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. I hope it was informative. Um, you know, maybe entertaining, but certainly I hope you learned something from it. Um, if you are planning to get a screening colonoscopy, make sure you follow the instructions. I know most people's complaint uh, is always that they can't believe they have to drink so much of that prep. They don't want to drink that prep. I totally get it. I was there. I totally get it. It is a pain. But the only thing that kept me going or kept drinking it is I kept thinking, you know what? The more I drink, the more I go to the bathroom, the cleaner my intestines and colon's gonna be. Therefore, the easier the doctor's gonna be to see what's going on on the inside because I don't want them to miss something important. And they can miss it or they can have you come back later, which is such a pain, not only for them, but for yourself to have to do the whole process over again if they can't see properly or if you didn't have a good enough prep. So definitely follow the instructions as you are given. And um, what are the tips? Get your adult diapers on that day. <laughs> Okay, take care and uh, don't forget to share this video with someone who may need to see it or hear the information. God bless. Bye.